all holy days of obligation are solemnities, but not all solemnities are holy days of obligation. Here on Chants and Rants, presented by Sing the Hours, myself, Paul Rose, and Father Nathaniel Sanders are going to discuss the reality of solemnities. Now, we're in a very weird recording setup. You're wondering why we're just sitting on a couch. You probably weren't wondering, but now you are, and that's what's important. We're here on this couch in what is really a, uh, the equivalent of a half-bedroom or a large closet, which is the recording studio where we present all of our chants and all of our Sing the Hours to you. It's very effective as a sound studio, but as a film studio, I think we are lacking in space. Actually, this is the normal way I communicate with most people. I like to talk to them while they're sitting just to my left, and I stare straight out into space. So this is great. I'm enjoying this. It is like in speech and debate when there's a cross-examination happening. Again, none of you are going to relate to this, but if you ever have been to a high school speech and debate tournament in crossfire or cross-examination, they stand shoulder to shoulder, and they don't look at each other but look at the judge. So you guys will be judge, jury, and... We will be the executioners of this particular podcast. That's good. Yeah, I like that little. Yeah, you know, yeah, you, yeah. sometimes you just got to execute. Better than I expected. So solemnities. Point. First, first, let's just take a brief look at can, canon law, and to save everybody the trouble of staring at us on this couch, we're going to throw it up on the screen. Canon law: the laws that bind the faithful. It says Sunday, on which, by apostolic tradition, the Paschal mystery is celebrated. In other words, every Sunday is a little Easter, right, Father? This is true must be observed in the universal church as the primordial holy day of obligation. So every Sunday is a solemnity. Is that that the first part of our answer? Yes, and the particular importance of a Sunday, that this is what from the beginning marked Christians out for who they were, that they had taken what was the Sabbath rest and transferred it to another day, showing that something drastic had happened, and that drastic thing is the, the resurrection, and this is what we celebrate. First day of the week instead of the seventh day, technically, right? Correct. The following days must also be observed. So in universal canon law, it says, The following days, the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, which we like to call Christmas. Then the epiphany, ascension, the body and blood of Christ, Holy Mary, Mother of God, her immaculate conception, her assumption, St. Joseph, St. Peter and Paul the Apostles, and all saints. With the prior approval of the Apostolic See, however, the Conference of Bishops can suppress some of the Holy Days of Obligation or transfer them to a Sunday. What does this mean, Father? Well, it means that while a particular solemnity, a particular high feast day, might be a holy day for the universal church, it is not necessarily so within a particular country or a particular region. But it's still a solemnity, right? This is true. So So it's still a solemnity, still celebrated but it is not morally binding on someone to attend Mass that day. For example, St. Joseph's is still a solemnity in the United States? Correct. March 19th, is it? That is correct. But it's not a holy day of obligation? Also correct. Because of an exception or a suppression approved by the Holy See for our Conference of Bishops. Exactly. But there are other countries, presumably, where St. Joseph's is probably a holy day of obligation. This is true. Okay, so we're going to backtrack a little bit. We're getting in the weeds here. A solemnity is a is the highest form of celebration in the church. As we've been reading about from canon law, a solemnity is by default every Sunday, but then in addition, certain other days. And how many did we read out? There are 10. Of the utmost holiness and importance in Christian worship. This is true. So in the modern categories, there are three types of saints' days. There are memorials, which are the most simple, and there are, there are required memorials and optional memorials. There are feast days, which are celebrating important saints, especially important saints for a particular region. Uh, the patron saint of your local cathedral would get a feast day. Uh, and then there are the highest rank, which are solemnities, and those are the particular ten that you mentioned. And we'll do a separate video on memorials and feasts, from the top, we have the solemnity, and those are of the most importance, and they also require certain behavior in law from the faithful. And if we go back, again, we'll put it up on the screen to canon law, it says, on Sundays and other holy days of obligation, the faithful are obliged to participate in Mass. Moreover, they are to abstain from those works and affairs which hinder the worship to be rendered to God, the joy proper to the Lord's Day, 
or the suitable relaxation of mind and body. There are really then four parts of this of what makes a solemnity a solemnity. Time set aside to worship in mass, public liturgy, then not working such that it would interrupt relaxation of mind and body, and then also giving due worship and also having joy. And that's really interesting that we can't do work that would interfere with joy. So a solemnity, which sounds like the English word solemn, it's not really necessarily a solemn affair, right? It, it actually denotes quite the opposite, usually, that there should be a, a great celebration and joyfulness, right? It is solemn in that it's done with great formality, but it is not somber in that sense. That's it, a... is, it, is a, it is a day of joy. Like any day hanging out with Paul Rose. Yes, of course, in this uh, closet in which we are recording. On a solemnity, you bring out all the bells and whistles. No green, mundane colors, but we have, on Easter, the, the biggest solemnity of all, we have flowers. Every church is adorned, even through the whole of Easter season, at, at, at the start of that solemnity. Solemnities, as he was talking about, with the feast days, that if your cathedral parish has its patron saint's name day, feast day, then... It actually is a, is a feast for that whole place, and we'll talk about feasts later. But there's actually a rule with parishes that it is a solemnity if your parish's name saint has their day on that day. So, for example, my sister lives in Twin Falls, Idaho, and in Twin Falls, her parish is St. Edward the Confessor. Tomorrow is the memorial, the lowest rank, for St. Edward the Confessor. But in her city, because the parish is St. Edward the Confessor. It's going to be a solemnity with all the bells and whistles, and they'll sing the glory and mass, which we'll get to in a second, and it'll be a party for my sister. In fact, she will be able to forego any Friday abstinence tomorrow in the jurisdiction of the parish of St. Edward the Confessor. So she can eat meat, she can do whatever she wants on that particular day. Today is the optional, optional memorial of Blessed Carlo Acutis. So unless a parish was named, you know, Blessed Carlo Acutis Parish, then no solemnity for anyone probably in the world. I'm sure somebody out there where we're going to get a comment, I go to Blessed Carlo Acutis Parish, then I hope you partied today, right, Father? Yeah. And he's, he's impersonating your voice quite accurately yeah. for what you're doing. And also it's important, solemnities get a first Vespers. So in a way, your sister already gets to start celebrating the That's feast true. of St. Edward the Confessor now. First Vespers, second Vespers. Let's talk about that for a second, talk about what happens liturgically on a solemnity. And again, we'll get to feasts and memorials later. So solemnities, we sing the Gloria. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Awesome. That's a cool thing. Solemnities, unlike feasts, we also do the creed, right? Credo in unum Deo. Did I say that right? Credo in unum Deo. You know, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. We, we say that or sing it on a solemnity. What else is on a solemnity? First Vespers, that's what he said. So usually every day there's lauds and Vespers, morning prayer, evening prayer. But on Sundays, because it's a solemnity, right? That's the first thing we learned. Saturday evening is actually the first Vespers of the Sunday celebration, right? And so if it is a solemnity like St. Joseph's Day, March 19th, we actually on March 18th will do first Vespers for St. Joseph's, which... St. Patrick, he's the 17th, right? He is the 17th. I guess he won't care. Right, yeah. Which is a feast in Boston, not a solemnity, the feast of St. Patrick. Because he's one of our patrons. Yes. Because we have many in Irish. Yeah, we're, f yeah, we're full of them and grateful. Yes. And you know what? In, in all of us, there's many in Irishmen too. Aren't you part Irish? I am. He might not look it, but he is. And I think I'm part Scots-Irish on my dad's side. No one actually knows. No one actually cares, yeah. Father. Yeah. So solemnities are, are very interesting. Also, we get one special creed during the year on a solemnity, on the Feast of the Annunciation, where you would normally bow during the creed, you kneel. And as we discussed with, with my sister, tomorrow she will not be doing any Friday penance. And that's actually in canon law. You're, you're not, you're, if a solemnity falls on a Friday, you're not to do any fasting. You're supposed to be doing joyful things. Yeah, you have a moral obligation to, to celebrate. And so to go party. have fun. Be fun. Be fun. <laughs> so, okay. Paul, you were talking earlier about yeah. the idea that not all solemnities are holy days of obligation. Sure, sure. 
Not yet, and that's not even due just to exception. So we already covered some examples where, like, for example, normally St. Joseph's is a holy day of obligation, but it's not in the United States because we have suppressed it. There are only six holy days of obligation in the United States, and those are January 1st, the Feast of Mary, the Mother of God, March 25th, the Feast of the Annunciation, Ascension, Ascension Thursday, whenever that falls, unless you are in one of those unfortunate places that celebrates Ascension Thursday on a Sunday. Yeah. Boston is one of the places that does celebrate Ascension Thursday on a Sunday. Thursday. That's we what keep I said. it on a Thursday. That's what I said. Yes. Then uh, the next would be the Feast of the Assumption yes. on August 15th, then the Feast of All Saints on November 1st. And then finally, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. The oh, obviously, for any of these, the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception. Yes, careful with your December. words. We're going to be confusing people. And then we have suppressed St. Joseph's. We've suppressed Peter and Paul, which I'm very sad about because it's my namesake. And then, in addition... Well, Corpus Christi in the U.S. has moved to a Sunday. Yes. Um, and then Epiphany has also moved to a Sunday in the U.S., we're still missing one. John the Baptist. Yeah. Other solemnities include all of the eight days of Easter, but only the first day is a holy day of obligation. Well, it's a Sunday. Yes. <laughs> and then the Monday through Saturday are solemnities. Big party days. There's no fasting during Easter week on that Friday. That's called, what's their name for that Friday? There's some old name for it, just like yeah. Bright Saturday, whatever. Yeah. But yeah. So there are more solemnities that are not in the top 10. There's the 10 really major ones, Holy Days Obligation, except the United States 6. And then there's a, other ones like the octaves. Octave of Christmas is also all solemn time, party city, but not Holy Days of Obligation. This is correct. Are there any others? Octaves? No, those are the two octaves. And then you would have your parish solemnity and then, yeah. Which would not be a Holy Day of Obligation either. Of course but would be a good reason to party. Yeah. So what do you do with this information? Well, my encouragement to you would be looking forward perhaps to the next solemnity, which is All Souls, All, all Saints. Saints. And then, yeah, All Souls is just a commemoration. More on that later. So All Souls Day. All Saints Day. Thank you. Wow. It's, you know, the other thing about this room, there isn't really any airflow. <laughs> So, so yeah. um, I can feel my face melting, but in a way where I think the humidity is such that I'm not sweating. So we're just sort of boiling. Yeah, it's good. So anyway, on all... I really hope that makes the final cut. I really hope that we return here on All Souls Day to be more sympathetic with the souls in purgatory. On All Saints Day... We already have lots of secular traditions, trick-or-treating and whatever. That's great. But on All Saints Day, think about how you can approach it with particular joyfulness, rest. You could consider taking the day off to truly live out the, the joy and the rest that we are called to in canon law. And then also, of course, we recommend going to Mass and participating in liturgy, perhaps in your domestic church, doing Lods and Vespers. You can even use Sing the Hours. We'll be recording Lods and Vespers and posting it a day in advance, so you have preparation. And First Vespers. And there'll be First Vespers, it's which exciting. is excellent. It's the most exciting thing that happens. Yes. Put aside time also to celebrate the reason for that day, which is to glory in God's saints. In conclusion, solemnities are important because each solemnity has a particular commemoration of a significant event in salvation history, that these are the big things that save us. And we honor and celebrate them because we are, we are saved by what happened on those days, right? So we are, we are saved because Our Lady said yes to the, uh, to the angel Gabriel and, our, and Christ became man. March 25th, Annunciation. You know, we commemorate the fact that all of these saints have been saved uh, and are now reigning with God in heaven. I mean, these are these are things that we should be joyful about, not even because we're commanded to be joyful, but because they are truths, and they are mm -hmm. truths of what happened by what God has brought into this world, and we honor and celebrate those truths. They make me happy, Father. That's great, Paul. You're often a dourman, so that's, this is good. That's a joke, right? A dour person. You're not a dour I'm person. I'm not a dour person. I'm a power person. <laughs> 
I accept this. Please listen to Sing the Hours and live in the power of Christ. And enjoy the upcoming solemnity. Yes. We've got a couple more coming up before the end of the year. Yeah. You're going to love them. Chants and rants, baby. Father Nate. Chant over. Chant and ranting. <laughs>